stay in St Helena is a unique experience. It's a journey to one of the most remote places in the world. It's an adventure that combines living history and natural wonder. Most of all, it's a holiday you won't forget and will want to share with friends and family. Every single day brought new experiences. There wasn't a day we thought, oh, what do we do today? And it just, there was just so much to see and do and experience. The variety, the historical interests, the fortifications, the walks, just superb, absolutely superb. There's nothing to distract you from it. And that's what is, I think is so important about going to a place like St. Helena. You've got the beauty, but you've got nothing to distract you. I want to go back. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the officer of the watch speaking. Here are today's navigational points of interest from the bridge. The ship's position at noon today With no airport on the island, the only way to St Helena is by ship. Degrees, three it's a five-day cruise from Cape Town on the RMS St Helena. And finally, results from today's South Atlantic cricket match. The officers went in first to bat. Despite being a working ship, passengers experience a high level of comfort. There's plenty to do and plenty to eat. Or they can just choose to sit and relax. Uh, the big struggle, of course, is the food. I think there's so much excellent food that uh, I'm going to have to take up some exercise, I think. With just 128 berths, the ship offers a friendly and personal level of service. Round one, and question one. I think from the moment we arrived, everybody was, was so welcoming, so friendly, and young and old, we all got on so well together, and it was just lovely. You, you feel in touch with the ship, you feel in touch with the people on the ship, and a fantastic experience, really. <laughs> After so long at sea, arriving at the island provides a moment of real excitement. I think it's, it could be on the moon, you know, look at those rocks here. Eh? Jagged, 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 eh? <laughs> St Helena is often described as an emerald set in bronze. The exterior looks formidable, the interior lush and green. One of the island's main attractions is its natural wonder. There's plenty for visitors to explore, either on foot or on organised tours. The scenery on the island is stunning and much of it can't be found elsewhere. You know, St Helena is such an isolated outpost that you have a combination of, of, of island evolution and extinction elsewhere around the world and, and the, the flora around you is totally unique. It's, it's, it's endemic. So the proportion of endemicity up here is, is, is really quite considerable. So wherever you look, you're looking at a plant or an animal that you probably won't see anywhere else in the world. It is a unique environment and the photographs don't do it justice. You've got to go there and just look at the 360 degrees of absolutely stunning vistas that, that are just breathtaking. Jamestown is the island's capital and was founded by the East India Company in 1659. Where you're standing now, uh, this would have been Royal Beach. It's full of living history. By the time they got it here, it, it was out of control, so they got the passengers ashore, but they scuttled the ship. The people are a legacy of the many different races that have passed through, enriching island culture. After the abolition of slavery in the 1830s, everything went into the melting pot to make, to make Islanders. When you think that St. Lena was on the main trade route to the Far East, I mean, that speaks for itself. Because before Suez, uh, any, anybody who was going to the Far East would, would come to St. Lena. So um, it's, ste it's steeped in history for all sorts of reasons. You only need to look at it on the faces of the people. 
to see all the different racial characteristics. We've had American whalers here, we've had uh, Africans here from the slave trade, and that slave trade has made St. Helena so colorful. We have Chinese influence, Malaysian influence, uh, Madagascan, Portuguese influence, no settlers, but all the same, the influence, and again, the British. I mean, St. Helenians, um, Culture is very colonial still. It's a very important part of our history. I mean, since the East India Company period, when the island was settled straight through to Queen Victoria, and even now the sense of colonialism is still very strong. St Helena's most famous resident wasn't British, of course. French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte was exiled in St Helena following defeat at the Battle of Waterloo. Both his homes on the island Briars Pavilion and Longwood House are well preserved and offer an intimate view of the great leader's final days. Napoleon took his penknife to cut holes in the shutters to spy out on his guards instead of his guards spying in on <laughs> him. It's, it's a real piece of living history. You know, it's not just reading about it in a book, it's seeing it come alive. What makes St Helena so interesting is that much of the island's history remains to be discovered. Before the construction of the Suez Canal, St Helena was a vital stopping point for ocean ships. The island was effectively a fortress run by the East India Company. The batteries up here are in incredibly good state considering most of them come from the 17, 1700s. They were built to last. High Knoll Fort overlooks Jamestown. It's another site where history comes to life. On average, the outer walls are between 1.5 and 2 metres thick. And that's again to withstand um, a cannonball from a, you know, from a ship off in James Bay. There must have been soldiers there that were sent out there for days. And how did they get there? And how did they feel? And was it cold and wet there? And you kind of wonder what their experiences were like. And there's a lot to, to stimulate the imagination on Santa Lina, especially when you start looking at, at, the, at the people and their experiences. Unlike a lot of countries where you'll go somewhere and, and, and the historic sites, you have to pay to get into them and you have tour guides and everything. Here it's very much as it was when it was left. You know, when the East India Company left here in the 1830s, it, it, it feels like a lot of the historic monuments haven't really changed since those days and that's a, that's a very unique thing. St Helena is just 16 kilometres by 8 kilometres, but there is enough variety to keep visitors occupied. It looks like a good day for running to me. You might be able to cool down in the odd shower. In June, there is a festival of running. How many are ahead of us? Go! As well as shorter and longer runs, there's a race up the 699 steps of Jacob's Ladder, a staircase that leads up one of the steep slopes on the side of Jamestown. Throughout the year, visitors can see the wire bird, a small plover that's only found on St Helena. What makes the wire bird so special? Because it's adapted to everything we're made of on the earth. They are a bit like the people on the all. Very vast all. They like to party. There's a network of roads best travelled in a 4x4. There's a hole in the, in the hill on the ridge. We call it spyglass. Visitors can reach parts of the island where the rest of St Helena feels far away. The whole island is beautiful and if you come here you need to see it and you know don't go away and just seeing Napoleon's house and you know, the you know the places where you can get to by car but also the coastal areas and the magnificent scenery. Today St Helena enjoys the status of British overseas territory. A governor is appointed by the UK and islanders elect councillors. The governor's house is open to the public for viewing on certain days. Wellington here, he stopped off, he came and spent a night on the island in 1805. In its grounds live tortoises. Jonathan is reckoned to be nearly 200 years old. I think it's unique. I know a lot of places in the world claim that, but there aren't many places that are quite as isolated or quite as spectacular when you actually get here. 
Uh, a lot of people return, having been here once, that they find that there's so much more to see. No matter how visitors choose to spend their time on the island, St Helena offers a once-in-a-lifetime experience. There's an abundance of things to do if you want to be busy and do them, but if you just want to sit and absorb that lovely atmosphere on the island, you have the freedom to do that as well. It's, it's something that you really need to experience. I tell anybody to, if they could to do it, because it's just, it's just so different. Words can't really do it justice. You're going to have to go there for yourself. It's beyond description.